Hey listeners, this is Billy Dean Shoemate III from the Strange Places Podcast. Today I've got something special for you, a podcast that dives deep into self-improvement, mental health, and spirituality. Check out Is That So with Harry Turner, the nocturnal therapist. Harry has some amazing conversations with a variety of guests exploring powerful insights, wisdom, and practical advice to help you live your truth and elevate your life. If you're into real talk and transformative journeys, this podcast is for you. Tune into Is That So on your favorite podcast platform. For more information, visit becomeanoutlier.com slash links. That's becomeanoutlier.com slash links. Stay L-I-T lit with Harry Turner on Is That So and start your journey to illumination and self-mastery today. Shoemate the Third. This podcast is brought to you by Asylum 817 Productions, Spotify, and DistroKid. This week, we're going back to one of my favorite places to travel on this podcast, perhaps the one of the strangest places in the world for many reasons, and you can take your pick. There's more than enough reasons to choose from. Egypt. In particular, we're going to focus on the Great Pyramid at Giza and explore a theory that sounds, <laughs> honestly... It is a theory that sounds utterly bonkers at first, positively nanners, but the more you dive into it, does more than just fuel speculation. The theory that the ancient pyramid, the Great Pyramid, was not a temple, burial place, or shrine at all. That it was some kind of ancient power plant. It has been rumored and speculated, and there is more than one carving or inscription to back it up elsewhere, that the ancient Egyptians had electricity. Is the Great Pyramid what supplied that electricity, leading them to create things that we today only struggle to do? Let's find out and see if there's any merit to this. The Great Pyramid of Giza. One of the seven wonders of the ancient world requires no introduction, but unfortunately we'll have to give it one. Stood the test of time for over 4,500 years, captivating the imagination of people from all corners of the globe. This towering marvel of engineering and architecture has been the subject of fascination, awe, and intrigue for centuries. Its sheer size, precise construction, and mysterious purpose sparking endless debate and speculation. As we gaze upon the pyramid's majestic silhouette rising high above the desert sands like a giant sentinel, whether you're viewing it up close or at the local pizza hut in Giza, (laughs) we can't help but wonder about the secrets it holds within its ancient stones. What was the true purpose of this colossal structure? Was it simply a grand tomb for the Pharaoh Khufu, as conventional wisdom suggests? Or was it something far more extraordinary? In recent years, a revolutionary idea has emerged, challenging our conventional understanding of the pyramid's purpose and functionality. The pyramid power plant theory proposes that this ancient wonder was, in fact, a sophisticated device designed to harness and generate energy, possibly for the benefit of the ancient Egyptians themselves. This theory, though still considered fringe, obviously, by by some, has garnered significant attention and interest, sparking intense debate and discussion among researchers, scientists, and enthusiasts alike. By exploring the pyramid's unique design, internal chamber layout, peculiar features to say the least, proponents of this theory aim to demonstrate that the Great Pyramid was more than just a static monument. It was a functioning power plant, capable of generating and manipulating energy in ways we're still struggling to comprehend. In this journey of discovery, we'll delve into the heart of the pyramid, examining the evidence and arguments that support this extraordinary claim. Let's venture into the depths of the pyramid's internal chambers, exploring the resonant cavities, electromagnetic properties, and mysterious residues that have sparked so much speculation. We'll also confront the criticisms and controversies controversies like we usually do surrounding this theory in particular, crazy one, engaging with the skeptical voices that seem to dismiss or downplay its significance entirely. As we embark on this fascinating adventure, man, I, I can't wait to do this one. 
This is the intersection of ancient history, right? Science, unbridled curiosity, man, this is it. The Great Pyramid, this is it, dude. Let's dive into it. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Because this one, I have very, very little scripting. I studied it to the point where I can do a lecture on it without writing anything down. Well, let's just start with this, okay? Let's let's just talk about it. That's probably the best way to do it. Just jump in there. The Great Pyramid of Giza is a marvel of ancient engineering, precision, alignment that continues to astonish modern architects and science. 2.3 million stone blocks, each weighing an average of 2.5 tons, quarried from miles away. The pyramid's sheer scale and complexity are awe-inspiring. One of the most striking aspects of the pyramid's design is its precise alignment with the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. Each side of the pyramid's base is aligned almost perfectly with these directions, with an average deviation of just three minutes of arc. A feat for us even now. Now try it without modern anything. No, no modern tools, no GPS, nothing. This alignment is all the more remarkable considering the pyramid's massive size and limited surveilling tools available to its ancient builders. The pyramid shape, a square-based pyramid with four triangular faces is also noteworthy. This shape creates a unique internal chamber layout featuring a series of narrow passageways, chambers, and cavities. The pyramid's internal structure includes the king's chamber with its flat ceiling, precisely cut granite blocks, the queen's chamber, a gabled ceiling and unique resonant properties, the grand gallery, a long narrow passageway with a high vaulted ceiling, the subterranean chamber, a network of tunnels and chambers beneath the pyramid's base. This internal layout has sparked intense interest among researchers who propose that the pyramid shape and internal chambers create a resonant cavity capable of manipulating and amplifying electromagnetic energy. The pyramid's precise construction and alignment combined with its unique internal layout may have enabled it to harness and concentrate energy in ways we're still struggling to understand. The pyramid's base is a near perfect square with each side aligning almost perfectly with the four cardinal directions. This alignment creates a unique energy grid, potentially amplifying and focusing electromagnetic forces within the pyramid's internal chambers. In other words, if you were to build a power plant, in particular, an electromagnetic power plant for this ancient society, you would build it right where it is and the shape it's in with the materials that you had at the time. The pyramid's four triangular faces also create a series of angular relationships, potentially generating a complex pattern of energy vortices, resonant frequencies. This isn't pseudoscience here. There's some weird acoustical properties inside the Great Pyramid. At the heart of the pyramid lies a granite core, which everyone seems to forget, comprising of some of the hardest and most durable stone used in its construction. Granite is a dielectric material, meaning it can store and release electrical energy. The pyramid's granite core may have played a crucial role in its alleged energy manip manipulating properties, potentially amplifying and focusing electromagnetic forces within the pyramid's internal chambers. Now, the, the, the combination of the pyramid's precise construction, unique internal layout, and dielectric granite core has led some researchers to propose that the Great Pyramid was, in fact, a sophisticated device designed to harness and manipulate energy. This idea is supported by the pyramid's unique acoustic properties, which create a series of resonant frequencies and energy vortexes with its internal chambers. That is true. A construction perfect for its use in terms of location, shape, and properties, but what was it actually used for? We need to know more. We need to know more about its properties, the things that it has that lend to the theory, as, as well as one thing, friends, the pyramid doesn't have. Do you know how many hieroglyphs, carvings, inscriptions, and drawings are inside the Great Pyramid? Do you have any idea? Zero, not one. Does this blow your mind as much as it did mine? In stark contrast to other ancient Egyptian monuments, the Great Pyramid of Giza is remarkably devoid of carvings and inscriptions. 
While temples, tombs, and other pyramids are adorned with intricate hieroglyphics, colorful paintings, elaborate reliefs, the Great Pyramid's interior is astonishingly bare. This lack of decoration is particularly striking when compared to the opulent tombs of pharaohs and nobles, which are typically filled with vivid descriptions of gods, goddesses, everyday life, right? Even the pyramid's own internal chambers, such as the king's chamber and queen's chamber, are eerily plain, featuring only smooth, unadorned stone. Why? The absence of any decorative elements, let alone the intricate hieroglyphs that typically adorn ancient Egyptian structures, is a stark anomaly that demands explanation. And no one bothers to address this glaring thing. In contrast, right, the Temple of Karnak had his foot the Valley of the King's Tombs. They're all renowned for their exquisite decorative elements showcasing the artistic skill and spiritual devotion of ancient Egyptian culture. The vibrant colors, intricate carvings, elaborate reliefs that adorn these structures are a testament to the Egyptians' deep reverence for their gods and their desire to honor their pharaohs. The Great Pyramid's stark interior, therefore, raises important questions about its purpose and significance, don't you think? Was it simply a matter of aesthetics, with the pyramid's builders opting for a more minimalist approach? Minimalism before minimalism was even a term? I doubt that. Or was there a deeper reason for the lack of decoration, one that speaks to the pyramid's true purpose and function? This question makes far more sense. One possible explanation for the pyramid's lack of decoration is that it was never intended as a tomb or a temple. I think that's obvious no matter how you dice it. Use your brain, something that huge, that exquisite, and not so much as a mason's carved signature on the thing. Some say it's a functional device designed to harness and manipulate energy. This theory suggests that the you know, pyramids, internal chambers, and passageways were engineered to create a specific acoustic and electromagnetic environment rather than to showcase artistic and spiritual expression. Another possibility is that the pyramid's interior was once adorned with decorative elements, which have since been lost or removed. However, this theory is absolute bullshit, no matter how many times I've read it. Given the pyramid's robust construction and the lack of any evidence anywhere suggesting that decorations were ever present to begin with. The pyramid's builders were meticulous in their craftsmanship, and it's simply not possible that they would have omitted decorative elements entirely. Not going to happen. The pyramid's stark, undecorated interior may also imply a more profound significance, hinting at a purpose that transcends traditional religious or funerary context. By eschewing the, you know, um, usual decorative elements, the pyramid's builders may have been emphasizing its role as a technological or scientific instrument rather than a spiritual or ceremonial space. Some, you know, something functional not decorative. Furthermore, the lack of carvings and inscriptions could be seen as a deliberate attempt to distinguish the Great Pyramid from other ancient Egyptian monuments. In a culture where elaborate decoration was not just the norm but expected, the pyramid's stark interior would have been a bold statement if not seen as downright treasonous to the great ruler who commissioned it, setting it apart from other structures and emphasizing its unique purpose. As we explore the pyramid power plant theory further, the lack of carvings and inscriptions becomes a huge part of this. You know, one that everyone overlooks because it's a hard one to pin down. Is it really? No. It doesn't prove anything, but it makes one thing obvious. This was built for function. Function. This changes everything. It's potentially revealing a more complex and enigmatic purpose behind this ancient wonder. We see this a lot on this show. How people seem to omit things that are a hard sell. We don't do that here because in the years we've been doing this podcast, the things that people omit out of laziness or fear of you know, ridicule are often where we find the keys to these things. Now, another thing that you have to dig your ass off to find another thing omitted a lot the residues deep within the great pyramids internal chambers a fascinating enigma awaits discovery in the queen's chamber a peculiar yellow k 
calcite substance coats the walls and ceiling, while a black soot-like residue clings to the surface of the granite blocks. These mysterious residues have sparked intense debate and speculation among researchers who seek to unravel their origins and significance, but they can't do it. How can you? Are you ready for this? I seriously don't know how it gets any better. Breaking news, 24-7 marketing powerhouse. 50 leads per day, 350 leads per week, ongoing leads. Yeah, I said that. If you want to learn more, check out the link in this episode's description. The yellowish calcite, also known as pyramid dust, is a fine powdery substance that covers vast areas of the queen's chamber. Its composition is unlike any other known calcite exhibiting a unique crystal structure and chemical properties. It's not natural. And I'm not just saying that. It literally is not natural. That has been proven and documented. So it, it's, this was created. This was a byproduct of something. Some researchers believe that this substance may be the result of an ancient high temperature event, potentially connected to the pyramid's alleged energy manipulating properties or something else that happened. The black, you know, that was lost to history, some, you know, something. The black soot-like residue, on the other hand, is a more enigmatic presence. Its exact comp uh, composition remains completely unknown. Again, it's unlike soot found anywhere else. Why in this exact spot? Its appearance suggests a possible connection to e electromagnetic activity or said unknown high energy event. Some theorize that this substance may be the result of an ancient technology or energy source which imbued the pyramid's internal chambers with unique properties. The presence of these residues is all the more intriguing when considered alongside the pyramid's constant internal temperature and unique acoustic resonance. Despite the scorching desert heat outside, the pyramid's internal chamber maintains a remarkably consistent 68 degrees to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, nice. Perfect. This phenomenon has been observed and documented by numerous researchers who are unable to explain its cause. And furthermore, the pyramid's internal chambers exhibit a unique acoustic resonance which, uh, you know, specific sound frequencies are amplified, resonated within the structure. This resonance is particularly pronounced in, like we said, the, uh, the Queen's Chamber. Why is this important? Because this is where the yellowish calcite and black soot-like substances are found. Ooh. Some researchers believe that this resonance may be connected to the pyramid's uh, alleged energy manipulating properties, potentially amplifying or focusing electromagnetic forces within the structure right there at the Queen's Chamber. The combination of these residues that are not naturally occurring, that's not an opinion, that is fact, the constant internal temperature and the unique acoustic resonance creates a compelling narrative, hinting at a more complex and enigmatic purpose behind the Great Pyramid. These anomalies are huge. This is revealing a hidden technology, possibly, some say, or energy source that has been, that's been lost to time. Moreover, the presence of these residues and anomalies raises fundamental questions about the pyramid's construction and purpose. If the pyramid was indeed a power plant, what kind of energy was it generating? Was it somehow plugged in to the Earth's electromagnetic field, or did it harness some other form of energy? Something exotic, something that we know about? The answers to these questions are still elusive, but the residues and anomalies provide a tantalizing glimpse into a hidden world of ancient technology and forbidden knowledge, possibly. The Great Pyramid, once seen as a simple tomb or monument, may hold secrets and mysteries that have yet to be fully comprehended. These internal chambers, residues, there might be a hidden history here that challenges our conventional understanding of history, everything, because Egypt is such a big part of that. Well, well, there's more weirdness. The Great Pyramid of Giza has been the subject of numerous electromagnetic readings and energy field detections, sparking intense interest and debate among researchers. They've been getting some weird readings, man. These readings that they're getting have revealed a complex and fascinating picture. 
with the pyramid exhibiting unique electromagnetic properties that set it apart from other ancient and even modern structures, including our own power plants. Reports of electromagnetic anomalies around the pyramid go all the way back to the 70s, when a team of researchers led by Dr. J.K. Harmon conducted a series of measurements using a spe you know, specialized equipment to locate this stuff. Their findings revealed a significant increase in electromagnetic energy around the pyramid, particularly in the king and queen's chamber. Man, we keep hearing about those, don't we? Since then, numerous other researchers have replicated these findings using a range of techniques and equipment to detect and measure the electromagnetic fields around the pyramid. These readings have revealed a complex pattern of energy fields with different frequencies and intensities detected in various locations all around the pyramid. One of the most intriguing aspects of these readings is the presence of a unique pulsating energy field detected around the pyramid's base. This field, which has been dubbed the Pyramid Pulsation, and yes, it is a documented real thing that has a name and shit, exhibits a regular rhythmic pattern frequency of about seven to eight hertz. This frequency is remarkably close to the Earth's natural Schumann resonance, which was, which was the reason why it was so hard to detect, leading some researchers to speculate a possible connection between the pyramid and the Earth's electromagnetic field. Other researchers have reported detecting unusual high energy particles around the pyramid, including gamma rays, cosmic rays. Yeah, you heard that. These particles are not, I repeat, not found in such high concentrations anywhere else in natural environments, leading some to speculate about an unknown energy source. The implications of these electromagnetic readings and energy field detections are profound, suggesting that the Great Pyramid may be more than just a simple monument. The presence of Unique energy fields and electromagnetic properties raises fundamental questions about the pyramid's purpose and function, and challenges our conventional understanding of ancient Egyptian culture and technology. Potential explanations for all these phenomena include the pyramid's unique geometry and structure, which may be designed to harness and focus electromagnetic energy, the presence of unknown advanced technologies or materials used in the pyramid's construction, a connection to the Earth's electromagnetic field, potentially allowing the pyramid to tap into and manipulate natural energy sources. While these explanations are speculative, they highlight the need for further research and real research and investigation, not with the Egyptian authorities looking over your shoulder and telling you what to say on the news. It's beyond interesting. And until I started diving into this, I did think this whole thing was a bit nanners. But the, like I said, the more you get into it, the weirder it gets. Now, as we always look at both sides of things on this show, it's only fair. The pyramid power plant theory has been met with a healthy dose of skepticism from mainstream archaeologists and Egyptologists, and rightly so. Any revolutionary idea that challenges our conventional understanding of history must be subject to rigorous scrutiny. Of the primary criticisms leveled against this theory is that it relies too heavily on speculation and unproven assumptions. I want to challenge that before we get too much further. How are readings of deposits inside the structure that are never seen anywhere natural and particles outside that are not seen in these concentrations anywhere on Earth, how does that qualify as assumptions? Just saying. Critics argue that the theory's proponents have failed to provide sufficient empirical evidence to support their claims, and many of the alleged anomalies and energetic signatures can be explained by more conventional means. For example, some have suggested that the pyramid's unique electromagnetic properties can be attributed to natural geological processes, such as the presence of underground water or mineral deposits. True. But that would make the site of the pyramid itself, not the area around it, truly one of a kind unique. Not buying that one because the Great Pyramid is not a natural structure. I don't care what's under it. We're talking about the pyramid here. Gotta try harder than that, people. Others have proposed that the pyramid's shape and structure are simply the result of ancient Egyptian architectural ingenuity rather than any advanced technological knowledge. But proponents, of the pyramid power plant theory. They argue that these explanations don't fully account for the pyramid's unusual features. I agree. 
They point out that the pyramid's electromagnetic properties are not limited to the presence of underground water or mineral deposits, and that its shape and structure exhibit a level of precision and sophistication that goes beyond mere architectural ingenuity. Alternative explanations and theories have also been proposed to explain the pyramid's alleged energetic properties, as well as strategically placed vents or small chambers no bigger than a few inches wide in some parts, angled in such a way that engineers and electricians studying the structure say that is exactly where they would put vents if this were a power plant, electromagnetic, or otherwise. Some have suggested that the pyramid's unique energy signature is the result of a natural phenomenon known as piezoelectricity or piezoelectricity, in which certain materials generate an electric charge in response to mechanical stress. Think of guitar pickups, same thing. The natural piezo effect is a thing, but once again, in naturally occurring structures. This isn't natural, this was built by people. Others have proposed that the pyramid's energy signature is the result of a more complex interplay between the Earth's electromagnetic field and the pyramid structure rather than any advanced technology or energy source, basically implying that the pyramid's placement and shape in that spot was somehow an accident. But what's fascinating is that these alternative explanations, what I found out, you know, diving into this, I uh, the more I'm sitting here, I'm like, these don't necessarily contradict the pyramid power plant theory. In fact, these skeptics should probably shut up because they're kind of complimenting it. They're offering a more nuanced and multifaceted understanding of the purpose and function. So like the more they try to explain it away, the more they actually kind of complement this theory. The debate is far from over, obviously, but one thing is certain. The pyramid power plant theory has sparked a renewed interest in the study of ancient Egyptian technology and knowledge and has challenged us to think more creatively about the ingenuity and capabilities of our ancient ancestors. I mean, look, <clears throat> excuse me. I know I said this sounds kooky, but look at it. Calcite and soot deposits that do not naturally occur, the lack of decorative elements and no inking from the Egyptians themselves as to what it was used for, the electrical and you know, particle readings around the pyramid not being naturally occurring, and people saying that it could be naturally this or that would imply that this all, everything we talked about, all put together is somehow an accident, a perfect storm somehow. That is rarely, if ever, the case. I don't think we give the Egyptians enough credit, at all. They were smarter than we realize. We see them as sand-eyed, loincloth-wearing people sucking dirt and eating bugs, but they were innovators that changed humanity forever in ways we still use. They were the first to wear makeup. They invented modern soaps, for Christ's sake. Deodorant, ink, locks and keys, weight scales, toothbrushes, toothpaste, surgical instruments that could be sterilized, fucking mirrors. They were the first to take care of their feet, and modern chiropractic practices come from them, as well as the first ever surviving written laws, as well as the first organized labor protests. How cool is that? I know this doesn't all point to power plant, but we need to change our thinking about these people. They have countless, and I mean countless, artworks that are anachronistic, unexplainable, and downright freaky. Depictions of modern looking machines, evidence of light bulbs, filaments, power use. Interesting, but we need to know what we can go by for sure, 100% with certainty with real, tangible evidence. The fact that there are materials and deposits inside the pyramid prove, and yes, I said prove, that we still have no idea why it was built, but I want to go further. It serves as function rather than form. It was used for something and not just for storing grain, not just for burying kings. Because there have been bodies found there. Pharaoh Khufu, who was known as possibly the king who commissioned the plans for the pyramid, Queen uh, Hedefiris, Prince Kawab, the, uh, yeah, Prince Kawab, some of the workers, an unidentified young boy, uh, the possible daughter of Khufu was found there. It, I'm talking Great Pyramid, like in there. We know how the Egyptians designed their tombs, and I tell you, this is not one. This one has to be proven. 
but with a disclaimer. We're gonna mark this proven, but with a disclaimer. Not proven in the sense that the pyramid was a power plant. Obviously, that's gonna require a little more, though it looks extremely likely. But what we can unequivocally prove is that this structure was built for function, not decoration, not burial, not anything else they used pyramids for. So what the hell is it for? Well, we can prove what it isn't. And as far as the rest, hopefully we will someday get an answer. One that explains all this, not just one or two things and doesn't have to omit, gloss over or leave out anything. If the pyramid is not an electromagnetic power plant, it would make a perfect one. One or two things that line up as normal amid a mountain of evidence, but everything? I don't wanna say power plant just yet, but what I can say for certainty is that there is something going on that is quite surreal and strange. I hope one day we get to find out. And that's all friends. Special thanks to this week's sponsors who make the show possible. Head to Asylum817.com. That's Asylum817.com to check out all things Strange Places and all my other artistic ventures. Make sure to also check out the link to our Patreon page in this episode's description, where as little as a dollar a month, you can get everything from bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, giveaways, certain tiers, outtakes, bloopers, a podcast just for the patrons. Yeah, I'm pretty sick in the head. Special thanks to the patrons, by the way. The Conkle Homestead YouTube channel. Donald Haynes, Dillagaff, all of our other patrons, thank you. Now, are we ever going to run out of strange places to talk about? I don't think so. Because every town has a strange place, and maybe one day, we'll visit yours. In a world where market noise can be overwhelming, Beyond Markets by Julius Baer cuts through the clutter to bring you expert insights and practical advice on the latest market developments. Each episode features in-depth conversations with specialists from around the globe, offering strategic inputs and unparalleled research to help you navigate today's shifting economic landscape. From stocks and equity markets to investing in private credit, delving into the future of AI, performance and risk of managing money, and everything in between, this podcast covers it all. What sets Beyond Markets apart is its exceptional production quality and ability to tackle complex topics in an accessible way. If you're looking for a podcast that stands head and shoulders above the rest, look no further. You've heard podcasts about business and economics before, but no joke, this one sits at the top of the mountain. Beyond Markets is the companion for those seeking informed opinions and expert analysis on the world of business and economics. A link to the show will be provided in this episode's description. You do not want to miss this one. <laughs>